Hello and welcome to Web of Light. And I am Dr. Kevin and this is... Angie D'Anjou. Oh, the <laughs> wonderful Angie D'Anjou. I could surprise you at times. <laughs> oh, you, you know, I have a funny feeling you'll be surprising me for the rest of my life. <laughs> well, the rest of your life, whichever that's, one comes uh, first. Yeah, that's true, whichever. Well, yeah, well, you know, but if you go first, I do mediumship, so you can still haunt me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be haunting a lot of people when I'm dead. I, I have planned for a very busy afterlife. <laughs> I'm already making my list and checking it twice. Ooh, a Christmas reference. Oh. It's not quite... It's not quite that time yet. Okay, but you, you, know, you know I've got the class. So we have, we have a grand announcement to make. Angie and I are opening a Web of Light Healing Center in Hudson, New Hampshire, where we're going to be bringing in some of the best uh, that we know, teachers in different subjects, we're going to be teaching. Yeah. We're going to be doing drumming circles there, all sorts of stuff to bring our own light into the community. Yes. And as you know, one of the courses that I teach is everything you need to know about life you can learn from a Broadway musical. It's going to bring bringing a little life into that scenario. <laughs> well, you know, so you're familiar with MAME. Yes. Right? Okay. And there's a song in Maine called We Need a Little Christmas. Oh, right? okay. You know, candles in the window, carols at the spinet. And there's a line where it says, it's not even one week to Thanksgiving Day, and we need a little Christmas. And I oh. think after the elections, I think we should move into Christmas spirit a week early. So I have my almost Christmas green shirt on today. First time not wearing shorts. Tells you Christmas is coming. I, I guess I have sparkles. Coming. I. You have sparkles. I have sparkles. <laughs> but I'm not going to go into full Christmas yet, because this is just this is a week, one this is one week before Thanksgiving Day that this airs. Yes. Makes me think of the song. So. I'm going to do so. What's up? Because I'm thinking I'm going to do my quote, and then because we've we've got our, our we have our astrology regular, today. We have, so we have astrology. So Dorothy we're has a lot to. Yeah, we want to start quick. Yeah. Yeah, a lot you, to talk about. Yeah, you know, you can never shut Dorothy up. Oh, uh, <laughs> just good, kidding. I'm a good listener. Wow. <laughs> hey, so hey. this is my pre-Christmas outfit. I'm just in a, I'm just a little elfy mood right now. Uh, okay, and here is today's quote, which is a poem from me called uh, "I Must Fly." Like a bird with oil upon its wings weighed down by the toxicity of this world. I cannot fly. Trapped by the greed and power mongering, I am grounded, screeching into an empty sky, the pain and frustration of my existence. Wanting to fly, remembering how to fly. Can I but free myself from the toxicity if I fly, will you fly with me? Will you remember, or shall I fly alone? And what shall I find? And will I find the happiness I seek in flight if you do not come? But I must fly. So what do you think? It's rather um, deep. Well, I, did, I picked this point for three reasons. One, I think that the way that the election went, and we're going to wait to talk about that when Dorothy comes on, I think a lot of people have <laughs> to remember how to fly even if they feel like they're drowning in toxicity. Second, with what's going on with the pipeline and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And again, that people need to remember that sometimes you just have to fly. fly. Sometimes you have to go. And sometimes you will leave people behind. And, and I see it. It, it, it. it makes me nauseous to see the infighting that's still going on between people who are acclaimed friends on Facebook and other social media mm -hmm. and 
taking swaps at each other and there are no, you know, and the funny thing is there's been nothing graceful about this whole process. There wasn't graceful campaigning. There hasn't been graceful winners. There hasn't been graceful losers. And I'm not talking about Hillary and Trump, but I'm talking about all of the, the people who feel like their whole worth and value is that their candidate gets elected. Like America is going to stop no matter what happens. And then the last reason I picked this point is because our astrology today is going to talk about going into the sign of Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, Sagittarians love to fly because they love to travel. Hello, Dorothy. <laughs> Welcome. How did you like that for a second? I was, like, I was wondering where you were going with that. You know, Sagittarius is, is a fire sign. Sagittarius loves to travel. Yes, they do. And have adventures and they're optimistic. We have a lot of optimism. And education and learning and expanding our awareness, expanding what we know through life experiences. And there's a lot of people going through that right now. Absolutely. Well, we're not quite there. It, it, moves, it moves in on uh, the 23rd. So, yep. I mean, the 21st of November. So, yeah. soon. This is, yeah. Oh. And, it, and, it's, and it's, it's right there. And yeah. so... I, I, I thought that this would be a good poem between the election and Sagittarius and the pipeline. I thought, oh, this no. should be interesting for me, too. Because <laughs> that's when I'll be heading myself off to Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, Mrs. Partridge is going on the road again. Oh, good. Come on, get happy. But I, uh, I actually have been kind of concerned about the fact that I'm going to be with restaurants and hotels down in that area, primarily because of all of the commotion that's been started where I feel people are going back into where the prejudice of, well, you can't come into our restaurant anymore or because you're black or you're Hispanic. And um, it concerns me because I, I see that as going back to the 50s and that's scary. <laughs> so people have to really start to unite and realize that America is a melting pot. Yeah, America is a melting pot that's melting down. Melting down. <laughs> There's a little meltdown going on right now. So yeah, it is a little around meltdown. the time that but that all changes is when I'll be out there. So <laughs> I want you to take a picture of me when you reach that first restaurant that says that you um, can't come in if you're Polish. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. Okay. <laughs> um, before we get into the hardcore astrology, you did make inferences on this show that said that looking at election day, it was much more favorable that, that Trump would be from an astrological standpoint, mm -hmm. not from a political opinion standpoint. Correct. That Trump would mm -hmm. be there on election, that, that, that it looked like he would be more likely to be there on inauguration day. On inauguration day. That's how I, what I chose it from, was yeah. from inauguration day. I did that with Bush and Gore, and just because of what I was looking at, I was looking at Saturn, and I could just see something really similar with, um, with uh, Donald Trump's chart that I could saw with uh, George W. And... Um, and it's the same situation. You know, the, the winning of the electoral vote versus the popular vote, this is the, only the fourth time in American history this has happened. And the time before was Al Gore and um, George W. Before that, I think it was Lyndon B. Johnson, and I cannot remember the first time. It was very early in our history. Mm -hmm. So it's a rare occasion that this happens, but... Um, I could still see, yeah, anyways, back to that. Yeah. I could see that in, the, uh, in the, whole, the whole process of things. Plus, in the astrology, in the big piece of astrology, and I'll touch just briefly on two things you just mentioned. Um, where Uranus and Pluto are right now, the technology, technical piece of it, the way they're squaring off and stuff, we haven't had this aspect since the American Revolution. And we knew, as astrologers, whoever pay attention to this stuff. I mean, we've already known that there yep. would be some types of American Revolution. Of course, it's not going to be the same as what we had in the 1700s, but it's very similar. So we needed this war of people before we were breaking away from British reign. But now, you know, we needed a really strong battle between two forces to create, that will create a similar energy that we had in the American Revolution time. Uranus and Aries, um, Pluto and Capricorn. And so that's happened. 
but simultaneously, and we know up there uh, that pipeline going through in South Dakota, right? It's, I keep saying North. Is South Dakota? Is it going through? South Dakota. Yeah. It's in South Dakota. I keep on, I keep on referring to it as the Dakota pipeline. I might as well just say and that. So, yeah. <clears throat> so the Dakota pipeline thing going on. One of the things, long term looking at uh, future of the world, is uh, as well as Neptune in the sign of Pisces. Neptune and Pisces and Uranus and Aries. What that in and Pluto and Capricorn, what all of that astrology terminology means is wars are fought because of water, not oil. And it's beginning now. We're, you know, Neptune is still in the first 10 degrees of that sign. That's its own natural sign. That's water. So if we're looking at the real meat and potatoes of things, it's water. And so we've known that world wars will be created because of water, will be started because of water, not oil. And right now we're on that precipice because it's oil and water that that war is being fought that it's a revolution it's a it's a battle yeah mm -hmm. because it's about the the the, the rerouting of water the contamination of water uh water sources mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people don't you know i've been trying to keep up on it i somewhat for standing rock and i've done done yeah. my little piece as i mm -hmm. can do it and mm -hmm. If I was free to go over there and be a protester at this point, I would. Yeah. I'd be on the next plane, um, you know. Um, and I feel like in this day and age of technology, I always go back to the fact that social media helped overthrow Egypt. Yeah. It was the internet that helped <laughs> overthrow Egypt. Yeah. And then the people that people got together and their voices got heard and stuff like mm -hmm. this. And I feel like it bothers me deeply that even now I will go, I will poke my head into the news cycle, you know, and I try not to stay there too long because I don't, you know, I don't want to die of poison overload. Yeah. Um, but I stick my head into this mm -hmm. cycle. And what I see is that you still get almost nothing about it. Now they'll take some story about Trump or Clinton was meant hiking by, you know, somebody met her hiking after the election or whatever. And they'll reframe and replay the story and I'll click through it and I'll say, you know, that has been played four times in the last 12 hours mm -hmm. by changing one hand the headline. They're not changing any of the content, but they're not reporting about the Dakota pipeline. They're not reporting about standing York. Very little. Mm -hmm. yep. All yep. of the national media, oh, well, you know, it's all about because of the election. Well, you're repeating the same story every mm -hmm. 90 minutes mm -hmm. and it hasn't changed a whit. Why would you not put a new story in yeah. unless you're trying to bury the story? Mm -hmm. But we have more access to technology than we have ever had. Yeah. Yeah. And more ability. And this is you and I have talked about this before. This is a time period where the underbelly is coming up. It is. Yep. And we are. Yeah, it is. And and. Just before we get into Sagittarius, like I said, which is on the 21st, I had the wrong data, the 21st, um, we're at the end of Scorpio, and Scorpio is the deepest um, place you can go, and so we, you can go, and we have to know what is in the underbelly, so to speak, you know, to, to, to know what we need to work on. That's why we've seen a lot of the ugliness, and we see a lot going on. I mean, I believe that um, Dakota stuff well, definitely the pipeline is definitely, it is growing and getting bigger. And with the sun moving into the sign of Sagittarius in a few days, um, Sagittarius is, uh, if we look at media, the, the piece of media for Sag is big media. So now I believe that this, now that the other news is done, because the whole world was watching us with that election, but now that's done, maybe this is what can, can start to grow because Gemini, which is opposite of, Gem, uh, opposite of Sag, is local media. And Sagittarius is multimedia and the world. So I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get to move that towards something else. Well, you know, and I forgot to share it at the beginning because I actually usually share this at the end of the show anyways, but um, since you were last on the show, um, I think we'd picked up some stations in New Jersey when you were last here, but I'm not sure. I don't recall. But um, we just picked up some stations in California. <gasps> nice. Yes. That are now that are now airing our show. Yay. So maybe when the sun goes into Sagittarius, maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Parlez-vous Francais 
maybe mm. you I don't know, know. <laughs> expectancy Deutsch. Yeah, I don't know. Subtitles. <laughs> big yeah. big media. It right? is big media. It we're, is. We're ready for big media, right? Yeah. Oh, we're ready. We're ready. I'm ready. It's an opportunity <laughs> for that. Yeah. I'm ready for my close up, Mr. Demille. Oh. <laughs> So yeah. going into the time of Sagittarius, yep. and I, I have a few questions. So you know what? Give us your update because I, I've, got some, I've, I've got some interesting questions that have percolated in the back of my oh, head getting ready for this so show. so many things. I could talk. There's a lot to talk about, but, you know, we, we start this month with um, Jupiter and Pluto in the square, and Jupiter in Libra is the relationships and how we want to engage in the one-to-one -one relationships and dialogues with others, with ourselves and with others, even country to country. And <laughs> it squares Pluto. And I think this um, shows to us the uh, tension and stress between us and Russia and any other country that I don't know about <laughs> that we're having tensions with. It China. Is, with China, thank you. Um, it, show, it, it shows that and it proves that. So we have this. This is a big aspect. It will only last, a, it, it takes about a week, but it's, when it moves that slow, it creates uh, a big change. So we are in the process of another big shift between us, you know, big stuff between us and them. Or if, if you even want to do that, I hate to do the us and them because I believe we're all one, but mm -hmm. we have differences of opinions and Sometimes they're rough. Well, one of the things that President-elect Trump has said is that um, he wants to formally take action and accuse China of um, manipulating currency, mm -hmm. currency manipulation. And everybody has been saying for a while now that China is, but nobody will say it as an official statement that it's being taken action on by our government mm -hmm. because there's a delicate... Uh, there's a delicate diplomatic balance when you're going to pick a fight with another major world power. Mm -hmm. And no matter what yeah. world President-elect Trump lives in, mm -hmm. in the real world, China is a major world power. Yeah. And if you're going to pick a fight with it, it's the, you know, it's the fight of the giants. It's not, hey, you know, we're the big eagle and we're going to kick your butt. Mm -mm, not so, anymore. But it's interesting because he said that mm -hmm. and it, he didn't talk about that that I recollect in his campaigning. But it came out as one of his top priorities in his first 100 days. Did it. Was I to have go after not China. paid attention. Yeah, was to go after China. Yeah. Which, of course, brings up, is he in Putin's pocket? Because mm -hmm. Putin would like nothing more than to have the United States pick a fight with China. Yeah. So very interesting when you say that aspect, that's what comes into there mind. There we go. All and right. who was the first one to congratulate him on the presidency? Milena? Oh, that's right. She voted for Hillary, didn't she? <laughs> yeah. You see that picture, right? <laughs> of him no. looking at when she was voting. He, he was looking over her. He, he was looking from his voting booth over, like, to make sure she was voting for it. Yep, I saw. That? No, I did not see the picture, but I did. I yeah. did read it. I read it. What was trending? I read that. Uh, I read about it. I. I swear, you would think I would be a media junkie because you know Gemini's love. Um, which I am, Gemini's love little tidbits of information, constantly grabbing little tidbits of information, yeah. just like Virgos do. You know, it's like, yeah. gimme, 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 gimme. But lately I've kind of, I shut it off for a little while. I had too much. Survival. In survival <laughs> mode. I was like, no, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. I'm going to go on. I'm just going to watch local TV or Netflix. <laughs> I don't want anything so else. information, it was Putin. <laughs> It was Putin. <laughs> I think we knew it was Putin. I read. I read it. Yeah. I didn't watch it either. I figured I can read what I, what is what I want information on, and the rest of it is just uh, BS, and I don't want to watch it. Yeah. So, so, yes, sir. More. 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 We want more. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Oh, what day glorious. is Thanksgiving? Oh, Dang, Thanksgiving is the twenty fourth, which is really interesting because that's actually when this aspect is exact. So we're feeling it now, but that's exactly when that's when this aspect's exact. That Jupiter, Pluto, and so watch your pockets too, guys, because on Black Friday, the twenty fifth, Venus. Venus, the lady, she is what I value and what I want. So actually spending something, I think there'll be something in the news that's going to make people feel a little nervous about spending too much money for a, the first week, for the last week or so of November. Because Venus always seems to show up right around spending time and people going crazy at Black Friday. People will most likely, what I feel they would do is 
try to buy practical. They should buy practical. There's two things going on on this day, um, Black Friday, which creates like a double-edged sword. One of them is I need to be practical and come in with just cash, you know, no credit. And then the other one is Jupiter's involved and Jupiter makes things bigger. So we'll buy big items really quick, really fast. So right between Thanksgiving and that first week of shopping, official shopping for the holidays. It's, oh, I think it's funny. <laughs> I'm not leaving my house Black Friday. I'm not going on to any shopping sites on Black Friday. <laughs> I am. I am going. I'm. I am blacking out technology. Yeah. For all of Black Friday, I'm either going to do a movie marathon or a book marathon. Yeah. And I'm not budging. That's my Black Friday. <laughs> well, the way to use this, if you if you choose, you know, a way to use. I mean, I can tell you that's what the energy is. But if if you really need or want to to do this, to use this. The Capricorn energy where Venus and, and Pluto are says plan. So from the time you see this, and as long as you see this before Black Friday, you know, make a list and do the research because there's a lot of advertising already on who's going to do, who's going to sell what at what price. Mm -hmm. So plan it. So if you plan it, then you're going to spend your money wisely. But if you think you're just going to go out and just blow money, it's not necessarily a good idea because you should really plan because of the Capricorn energy that's present. And I know we're talking about Sag, but that's where the sun is. And the oh, other yeah. planets, the, the other planets are in other places around us. Right? Now, does that make it? Because I know that we have Black Friday, mm -hmm. but then we have Cyber Monday for shopping online. So does that switch off a little? <laughs> Cyber Monday, the moon enters Sagittarius. And that will be a lot of mailing and shipping of things. <laughs> yes. Sun moon conjunction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the new moon on the next day, on Tuesday, the 29th. Well, if either one of you see a really great deal um, uh, that, that, that is too good to pass up, um, I will come out of hibernation. If you can find a really good deal on a one size fits all wedding package where I can just like buy it oh. and like my wedding's all taken care of. <laughs> no. Outside of that, yeah, no. <laughs> I am not a shopper. I'm not a shopper. You don't have to worry about that with me neither. I don't go out for Black Fridays. <laughs> no. You want to come do a movie marathon? <laughs> I'll be in Kentucky. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Mrs. Partridge is deserting me again. Go ahead. <laughs> On the 26th, though, which is... Um, What's that? That's just a couple of days. The 26th is a Saturday after Thanksgiving. You know, we, there's just, there's Mercury and uh, Uranus are connecting in a way that there's a lot of talking, a lot of communication, a lot of driving. So it's really, it's a, it's a, it's a good day for traveling. It'll just create a lot of traveling. And since that is like Thanksgiving weekend, a lot of people do travel on these weekends. So it's just the, the energy, which is, you know, the, what do you, how do you use that? You just, well, you know, there's going to be a lot of company out there. You know, it's not a big deal, but there's a lot of company out there. Mercury and Sag. Mercury uh, loves those short trips. Sagittarius loves the long ones, right? Because that's, so there's a little bit of a, a push-pull all through the, the whole weekend after Thanksgiving. Well, the short trip is to the airport, and the long trip is where the plane takes you. Oh, my God, that's so perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was trying to get away that weekend myself, but I just couldn't manage it. Yeah. Next, new moon in Sag on the 29th of November. So when we have that new moon, it's like on East Coast time, it's at 7.18 in the morning. So it's early in the morning and, and you know, that moon in Sag and the sun in Sagittarius, again, it's just more about being optimistic and adventurous and having fun and learning and setting goals towards, you know, I want to travel, towards being, uh, learning about new education, educating ourselves, just doing things fun that are educational as well, because there's a lot of education with Sagittarius. Teaching is really important with Sagittarius too. So if you want to learn th new things, now's the time to do it, now that we have the sun in Sag. Or if you're looking at setting up new classes, especially metaphysical classes and spiritual things, because that expands our awareness of the world around us, besides just our you know, intellectual knowledge, and you this said a good day to, to do, do that is what? Well, the way we set goals for that is we, we start on the 29th. It's first thing in the morning, so the 29th of November, and that's a good opportunity to do that. What day that. of the week is that? I don't have that's my... That's a Tuesday. 
oh, well, that's good because that's an office day for me. So, you, so yeah. you'll hear from me on Tuesday about <laughs> what astrology classes you're going to teach at the Web of Light Healing Let's Center in Hudson, New Hampshire. That sounds awesome. I can do that. <laughs> December 19th. Isn't that interesting? So how long can you have these discussions for just for that day? Or? No, set goals. No, just set, set intentions on that yeah. day. Just that day? or can Set you go intentions into... on that day, and then the moon is in a waxing phase for the next two weeks after that. Until we get to the full moon. So if people always... don't get a chance to set their goals on that day, they still have a few days to be in that energy? You mean you couldn't sit down for one minute and find a time to set a goal? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to make a big production out of it. You can just say, you can. We're you talking can. about okay, Kevin. Okay, good. good. Kevin. You can. Say. <laughs> yes, I know. You and, your, you and your productions. You can make a big production out of it, but you don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> Sit down and set goals for yourself, how you want things to be, how you want to learn and expand your knowledge, expand your awareness, learn about our political system and a lead in why the electoral vote and how it works and why they use it as opposed to the popular vote. Teach yourself something. Well, and <laughs> so now I opened a can of worms. Yes, yeah, twice, <laughs> twice. I let it go by the first time. I know. I, I was like, because you were like, I don't know. So I was like, before the show started, as we were, we had, we were having some small technical difficulties before we started taping, and the conversation came about the electrical, uh, the electrical college. Yes, the one that everyone gets shocked by, the electoral <laughs> college. That too. <laughs> <laughs> and. You are a proponent for the Electoral College. I said I understood it. Okay. I have listened to it, and they, I have watched a video on it, and they are very informative and very convincing. And I cannot mm -hmm. tell you what university put that out, but, um, because it escapes me right now. But I found it appropriately. I found it appropriate. It seemed like it worked. And, you know... And I'm going to say right now that I'm going to be uh, to for our viewers to keep an eye out. We are doing or actually because you're going to be in Kentucky. Um, I'm going to be doing a special show with Matt Connerton. Mm -hmm. Do you know Matt? You I know do. Matt? Yeah. yeah, that's right. So Matt and I are doing a show that we're going to be shooting in a few days that will be out uh, called Surviving the Trump Presidency. Mm hmm. And um, I'm completely adamant that this is not a Trump bashing show. We're going to actually take all of the things he says he's going to do in the first 100 days. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over them point by point, and we're going to discuss them. And the things that I think are really good, I'm, I'm going to think are really good. If I disagree, I disagree. But I think that there's not enough knowledgeable conversation, and there's mm -hmm. too much hype going on. Yeah. Always, yeah. Yeah. And so this show is really geared to being knowledgeable. And he talked about getting rid of the Electoral College mm -hmm. and, um, and during this election. Now, he didn't have it in the first 100 days, but he did talk about that that's one of the things he wanted to get rid of. Um, and that's when everybody was saying that even if he won the popular vote, that Hillary would win the Electoral College. And he made very definitive statements that he wanted to get rid of the Electoral mm -hmm. College. Now, mm -hmm. what happened? She won the popular vote. He won the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I will look for that video, mm -hmm. um, but the Electoral College is a hotbed issue. And if we don't eliminate it, I think that there's one part of it that, has, that, that I would say would be mandatorial. I'd like to see mandatorily put in place, yeah. which is the electoral votes split by the popular vote. Mm. So if you have five electoral votes and two thirds went Republican and one third went Democrat or whatever that they, the Democratic get two and the Republicans get three. I agree. It's this, it's this block thing. Mm -hmm. And I see this online all of the time mm -hmm. about, you know, this conversation is going back and forth. Well, you know, but then, you know, California and New York and the blue liberalism would run the country if it became popular vote. Not necessarily, because if you don't think that there are conservatives in New York State, in New York City, if you don't think there are conservatives in California, yeah, if you don't think that there are liberals in Kansas, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know what you've been smoking, but you could probably sell it for some good money because <laughs> everybody is everywhere. And so I would like that's why that representation is 
even her winning the electoral, even her winning the vote was not by a huge margin. Mm -mm. It was it was close. But there's been bigger margins that people have lost or won by um, the 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 thing and done the opposite. I know it's only been four times, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but why would not if you have a conservative, if you have two conservatives and a, and, a, and, a, and a liberal or two reds and a blue, and I hate, the, I hate all of that, but if you had two reds and a blue, why should the blue not be heard? If you have two blues and a red, why should the red not be heard? I agree. So we need to do something with the college. It cannot stand as it is. Mm -hmm. And the fact that three times it's locked up in, the la in, in less than the last hundred years mm -hmm. is telling us that this we have outgrown it in some format. In some format, we've outgrown it. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts you want to share before we move on into Sagittarius? I honestly look at it as I feel as a, as a country, as a nation. We've actually outgrown all of this. We're Democrats, we're Republicans, we're independents. So, if we didn't have all of that conglomeration, we wouldn't have to deal with that. So, <laughs> yeah. Now well, we're gonna we're gonna see. So no, it is, it, and that's that's the thing about let's educate ourselves, and this is the time of year when we can do this. Let's educate mm -hmm. ourselves, um, and people. But people are living very um, emotionally right now. Yeah. You know. Yes. They're very emotional. They're not mm -hmm. um, able to intellectualize things yet because, like you said, they feel threatened. You know, I, I never personally, I, I remember feeling that way in the past, but personally I don't put what somebody else says or does, it, it won't influence my life like that because I have no control over them. I have no control over any of that. So why if somebody won or lost? I mean, it, it bothers me, but I don't let it, 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 it doesn't over, I don't overstep and just like protest the results. That's poor losers. And I think that's, that's too bad. You know, does that make sense? Yeah, and I think that there's a whole, there is a whole level of fear underneath it, which I do, yeah. I understand on, from one point. I, I don't agree with violence. I don't ever agree with violence. Yeah. But there is a whole level of it though of people that are afraid that fought very hard and long to get protection to be treated equally. Mm -hmm. And so you go down, you know, um, so now it, it, it was said as a, it was, it's an actual petition or something that's out there and everyone's laughed at it, but the fact that even it got out there and got any legs, there was a petition out there that to overturn the 19th Amendment which is the women's right to vote, so that women would lose the right to vote, that women weren't capable of voting. And this is social media, and the silliest little things get the biggest hype. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's Sag. Let me, we're not quite there Good. yet, but that's Sag. Hey, yep, go ahead. Expanding, blowing things out of proportion, because another piece, a real basic piece of Sagittarius, and when we're in this energy of Sagittarius, we're all going to feel a little bit saggy and Sagittarius is all about expansion, right? Ooh, saggy. And getting bigger like and everything. But it's so funny because out of all the zodiac signs, Sagittarius is the longest word, uh, the longest zodiac letters, mm -hmm. and it's the only one that everybody always gives it a nickname. It's Sag, S-A-G, Sag, instead of Sagittarius. But it's the one that's always, but it's so relaxed. It's relaxed, it's comfortable, it's playful, it's joyful but it's also, it expands too much. And if something is going, like if you're eating too much, you're gonna expand, you're gonna get bigger. It's like that, yeah. but feed your mind, feed your mind. Well, you know, the <laughs> thing is, to do. Um, you know, in true Sagittarius, the fish was this big. No, mm -hmm. um. <laughs> it is true, that is Sag. We all got a little Sag somewhere because we all embody every zodiac sign yeah. Every zodiac sign. And, and I know how ridiculous it is, and I know social media blows up, but, uh, blows things up. But my, uh, my point was, you know, we know that the women are not going to lose the right to vote. We know that, um, you know, there are certain things that are never going to go back. I also, I mean, I know that there is a, uh, because of the language Trump used in campaigning, oh, yeah. 
that he initiated, incited violence, um, some of the violence that's going on against some minority groups and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I, I don't let him off the hook for that. But I don't know that he himself is, is at the level of, of bigot that some of his followers are. Not all of his followers. There are many people who follow Trump that don't say, because I'm an entrepreneur, because my jobs went overseas, mm -hmm. because of this, mm -hmm. because of that, that yep. have perfectly valid reasons yep. why they voted. Him. But he did attract to him some of the most violent, judgmental, bigoted, that are now, you know, trashing moss or tearing headdresses off or beating up something. And there's that level, you know. It's very hard to hide you're a woman, but it's not impossible. It's pretty, imp it's, it's not impossible to hide that you're black because some are very light colored and if they dress the right way and do the thing, they can hide it, but most cannot, mm -hmm. you know. But why does anybody have to hide anything? You shouldn't have to. Mm -hmm. No, and, nope. and so that's, that's kind of where that energy comes from. Yeah. So what else is going on in Sag? Because I, I still have a couple of Sag questions I want to ask A couple you. of Sag questions. Well, you know what? That's the, the Sag energy that's real popular. But what else is going on in uh, Sagittarius time um, is, let's see, December 2nd, Mercury in Capricorn. It's when it moves into the sign of Capricorn. That's serious right? Because it's going to be retrograding Capricorn. So it's serious and it's, um, <clears throat> we want to make the rules. And this is where, I know it's early, but this is where we sit down and we take notes. We do bullet points. We don't know what the details are yet, but we do bullet points. You know, Mercury is all about writing and communication and documents. Capricorn is the authority figure. So we're trying to act like, so this is the Gemini, <laughs> Trump, <laughs> trying to act like he's a big boy and he's the president. I mean, he gets to play the role soon, but this is him trying it on right now. So how does that play out in my life or your life? It's like, well, where is it that you're feeling kind of casual? And things are casual because we still have all that casual energy of Sag going on. But we take it and it's like, well, where should I start planning things and be a little more serious about something? So again, in your instances, you guys are planning to open up a place and set up schedules and things such as that. And that is what this energy is all about. And that's where it starts um, December 2nd. And I have a note and I never looked it up. So I don't know when it ends because Mercury goes retrograde this month as well in December. So Mercury stations and goes retrograde right on top of Pluto at 15 degrees of Capricorn. So the whole structure and the foundation from where I started that Pluto stuff, the whole structure and the foundation of our country is definitely going through a shift. So he is going to go in there and he is going to try and change things that we think are permanent already. He is going to go in and try and change laws. And this is another proponent for Hillary wasn't promising that. Hillary was, you know, kind of offering the same little more, little little bit, but he is in there to make the big changes. If he gets to it or not, we will see. I mean, he has to have a lot of people behind him, but. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's very interesting because, you know, and again, I, I take everything I read with a grain of salt, but uh, the, the statement came out, which doesn't sound like it was fabricated. It came from a reliable news source. I didn't read what their opinion of it was, but, you know, he's actually saying that he may only live part-time in the White House and part-time in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. at his thing. Like, being yeah. president isn't a full-time job. No, he's not allowed to do that. See, <laughs> that's what I, when I saw on the inaugural day, Saturn conjunct his moon, it's like he is going to have restrictions more than he has ever had in his life. And that's why I knew it was, he was going to, to me, I just knew he was going to get in. I was kind of hoping not, but, you know, <laughs> that's just an opinion. But, you know, and, um, so it is what it is, but I knew that's what was going to happen, and he's going to have these restrictions. So we'll see if, if he's allowed to do that or not. I don't believe it's going to happen. I don't believe he's going to be able to do that. No, you sign up for a seven-day-a-week, 24-hour-a-day job, yeah. and you have to be on call. You have to be accessible if something goes wrong yeah. somewhere. Mm -hmm. You can't be chased down. No, no, not at all. Not at all. And... Um, but I guess we'll see. But what can I use it? Like I said, let's bring this back to personally us, yeah. what us, what we want to do. I mean, 
plan, schedule things, look at what your future is, whether it's you want to uh, get a better job, look at, you know, what you need for more education to get a better job, to get to feel like you're, you know, climbing your ladder of, at your business. Things like this is what we like to do. And we'll get into more of that when we get to Capricorn next month. Now, now, you said Mercury goes retrograde in Sagittarius or in Capricorn? In Capricorn on December 19th. Isn't that interesting? Okay. <laughs> Why is December 19th interesting, Kevin? That's the day the Electoral College Holy actually votes. votes. And, and Mercury's um, stationary on that day. <laughs> and it just, it creates like, I think more pe most people don't know that. I think most people never really know that this has come up. I don't even remember that from the Bush Gore. I don't remember that. Yep. Know that now, though. Yeah, because people are saying they could they, they could throw tradition out the window. Yeah, they're not going to. It's Capricorn. They're not throwing tradition out the window. That's Capricorn is tradition. It's many things. Now, that's on the 19th. Mm hmm when does the sun that's when mercury goes into capricorn but the sun's still in sagittarius at that point mercury goes into capricorn on december 2nd it goes retrograde on december 19th and the sun moves into capricorn the sun moves into capricorn on the 21st so it's going to be a slate sagittarius sun mm -hmm. which is non-traditional correct freedom loving <laughs> playful <laughs> right let me look it up in my book rebellious yeah yeah. And a stationary Mercury in Capricorn. So funny. Do you do numerology? The moment that Mercury goes retrograde on December 19th, it, it does it at 5.55 a.m. <laughs> All three fives. Three fives mean like changes are rumbling through the, yeah. our world, our universe. But the thing with the 555, okay, is it also uh, it's the changes of what you want as your basis that surrounds you? Oh, because if you bring in your 3-5 five, five energy, you yeah. come into the 6, and the 6 is all about what do we want around the base yeah. to make us most comfortable. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am a 5 in my numerology. So change, just change, me. change, but it's yeah. about What's... bringing that solid piece there. So those are the things that we have going on. So with that, with that on the 19th of December, that's the end of Sag, you're right, last two degrees. Um, and Mercury retrograde right on top of Pluto. The faster moving planets don't, don't create major life changes, but when the planets go from their stationary to retrograde, they, I mean, the retrograde to direct or either way, they sit still for a minute. It's just like starting a car, you know, you get in the car and you have to stop before you put the car from reverse into drive. You just have to stop. That is when they make their biggest shifts. And Mercury retrograde is not necessarily troublesome. It's when it sits still and on the day that it changes to retrograde or, once it's done that, to direct. Those are the days. And it's right on top of Pluto on December 19th when it goes retrograde. This is a big one. So it's one planet of, of death, rebirth. Regeneration. One of the other things I want to share with that is because it's on the 19th mm -hmm. of December, um, the actual mode for that day mm -hmm. is about creativity. Because it's the Working ten. with the highest of our creativity on nice. that day. For all of us, I mean, for the rest of us, I mean, it, it's, another, it's just another day. But it's a day that when, when Mercury is stationary like that, you know, there, there can be traffic. I mean, we're, we're building up to Christmas, you know, for a lot of us. And a lot of people celebrate Yule, which is on the 21st, that pagan holiday. So there's a lot of excitement and things building and building and building. Mm -hmm. But when Mercury is retrograde during Christmas time, if you have anything to ship, you're going to ship it early. You want it to be there before the 19th, 19th. even before that if you can. You want to do all your mailing and your shipping and all your planning before the 19th. And then leave that last week of Christmas for your local, your local duties, whatever that is. Yeah. Okay. So, anything else going on before I, 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 I roll out the couple of questions I had? And any questions, Angie? No, go, go for it. Um, so, the, one of the questions I had and, um, is, so we have this, the, the Christmas, the majority of the Christmas season 
-hmm. is all Sagittarius. Yes, always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we go, Christmas Day, Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Capricorn, tradition. Think of it as tradition. It's mm -hmm. tradition. Not as heavy weight. But it's, but it is, but it's tradition. But mm -hmm. it's, tra it's, so you have all of these crazy things going on for Christmas season. Um, do you think astrology had, because you know that Christmas Day is, a, is, 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 you know, evolved. It's one of those things that kind of got stolen out of religions before Christianity Correct. and moved forward. And the, the Christ story mm -hmm. is in every other major mm -hmm. ancient world religion. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, there's, there was nothing new or original about a virgin birth, uh, blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, and so did I hear a gasp in the crowd? Of you might viewers? have. Oh, I felt that too. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean? We're the originals. Nah, you copycats. Um, do you think that the astrology of that, that people felt lighter, more playful, more, ex more expansive things we associate with the Christmas season. Do you think that, that, that Sagittarius created the Christmas season? to be bookmarked by Scorpio, which is a fixed sign. Correct. And then Capricorn. Yep. Which is a sign of tradition. Yep. But before she answers that, yeah. it's not just Christmas because you also have other players in there. Like Hanukkah comes in that point of time. That's true. As well. Hanukkah, and Yule, Yule, Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. So yeah. those are all traditional Capricorn things, things that, well, the tradition which, which celebrates um, your lineage, which is tradition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just all tradition. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, if you want to look at the party signs of the Zodiac, Sag is definitely always near the Sag top of the list. Sag and Leo. Yeah, the fire Sag signs. Yeah. The fire yeah. signs. Yeah, fire yeah. signs. Yeah. Are, you Aries, know. Leo, Sag, yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a... So, so they've created a season <laughs> where they can party from the minute the sun gets into Sag yes. until the minute that it comes out of Sag, mm -hmm. True and then it becomes deeply traditional. Yes. So did Sagittarius create the Christmas season? No. Because we have it in all these cultures. I you know. say no? No. <laughs> it's a big party, though. <laughs> it's a big party. It did create, you know, to me, Sag is... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know, because Sag really does love to play and have fun. And, you know, I mean, how do you learn, you know, through travel, you know, and through experiences? I mean, you know, I leave, leave the country and talk to somebody from another country and just see how they live life and experience life, and, and that will expand your awareness. But, the, mm -hmm. but you can have fun doing that and just enjoy it, and it's just fun and casual and carefree. So... You know how long I've been meditating on that question? Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> a while, I think. <laughs> Probably about an hour. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it popped in my head just before the show. I went, you know, there's See, a Sag. Your Jupiter's in Sag, right? I yeah, my Jupiter's in Sag. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Jupiter is the ruler of the sign of Sagittarius. So each planet is in charge of a zodiac sign. And so when it happens to be in its natural sign when we're born, because the planets move around, right? So the zodiac belt is around us, and they're all in different places, but it likes to be in that sign. So you should be somebody, at least, that likes to have some fun, which we know you, <laughs> Dr. Kip. Hey, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jupiter and Sag, Mercury and Leo. What can I say? I know. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. it. Literally, just before the show started, it popped yeah. in my head. I went, hmm. I wonder if the energy of Sagittarius is why you have a major party season in almost every world religion. I, I mean, yeah. every spirituality around the world. Yeah. This is a party season. I mean, yeah. like... Uh, party and travel and... Party and travel. Yeah. You go and see relatives. You go visit yeah. places. You go do things. All of this stuff. And I'm thinking, this is the perfect Sagittarius energy. I think that the, the, the Sagittarian gods up there... <laughs> <laughs> yes, people, go, go, yeah. play, party, make up whatever myth you need to justify the partying, but go. <laughs> you love doing this show, Thank you know. I love it, I love it. I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of, okay, Sag. 
So that's party. So when you have a lot of people who have Sagittarius births, so when were they conceived? Hmm, that's February. That's Valentine's Day. Yeah. So how long's Valentine's <laughs> Day been around? Because, you know. Yeah. We but, don't but, have to say anything to know, you know, nine months later. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. Uh -huh. Or you're really trying to stay warm. <laughs> Pretty on part of the world you live in. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, in Australia, you're trying to stay cool. You're trying to stay cool. <laughs> the Northern Hemisphere. So yeah. then you're running around, you know, swimming. Yeah, there you with, go. You know, no clothes on or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that could bring something up. Who knows? <laughs> Oi vey. Hey, I think we're a bad influence on you. you. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you usually say that. My antenna must be up today. I'm picking up your stuff. <laughs> okay. So I want you to explain I want you to explain something to me. I'd like to hear your your interpretation of this. All right. And anybody who's ever done an astrology chart, and you know this day and age, you can get a chart without going to an astrologer. So mm -hmm. people get information, they don't you know, they don't always know exactly what it means or what to do with it, but they hear mm -hmm. terms and stuff like this. Yeah. So, you know, I'm three degrees Scorpio on my, I'm at 27 degrees to Scorpio, and I have what they call an intercepted first house. So it's mm -hmm. all of Sag. Mm -hmm. So I have all of Sag in my first house, but my cusp mm -hmm. is Scorpio. Mm -hmm. So how much, so what does that mean in the play out, an intercepted first house, and what would, the, how would that show up? that I have 30 degrees of Sag in my first house and three of Scorpio and three of... Well, you ha it just shows up on the, the cusp, the house cusps of the first yeah. house and then the second house. Yeah. This is a very technical thing. This is not a beginner information. People want to know about that, but if it happens on one side of the chart, the exact thing happens on the other. So as above, so below. And that's yep. where that comes Absolutely. from. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so what it, what it represents, um, there's a couple trains of thought. The way I feel is... You're beginning whatever zodiac sign is on a house cusp. You have to pres you have to use that energy to activate the house first. And then you know, so you have to be the Scorpio first because that's on the house cusp. To act before you get to that, before you get to Sag, and then you get to play. So you have to be that person who is about transformation, and then you're that person who is the educator because Sag is also education, and that will expand that. So you have to go through your own transformation first before you become that philosopher, the teacher, the person who expands other people's awareness and helps to create that. And so intercepted signs, it was almost, you're almost correct. People do say intercepted houses, but it's actually intercepted sign okay. in a house. I, I misspeak that all the time too, because it just rolls it's out. Easy to see. It's easy to, it's easy to misspeak. So basically when you have signs that are intercepted, um, happens a lot in the Northern Hemisphere, um, especially when we get to this longitude, you know, when we get up this high, um, just because of the shape of the Earth being okay. round. Mm -hmm. It's trigonometry, I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 don't go there. <laughs> but, don't go there. But energetically, we basically just need to engage two energies, two zodiac signs, actually three, in one sector which means you've got double duty other places in your chart. Oh yeah. Well, and so. it's interesting because I was uh, working with some clients on Saturday, um, Saturday night, I actually was working with a couple of people um, doing back-to-back -back healing sessions. And afterwards we, we, we broke bread during some part of it and we were having a meal and I, they were hysterically laughing and, and they, the, the conversation came up about, you know, that I actually, in my, you know, disreputable past, did stand up comedy for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And, and oh, I was Sag like, is jokesters for, for mm -hmm. sure. And it was like, but I really get it. I, I said, you know, the reason why I developed, I developed being so funny was because if I wasn't, I'm so friggin' intense, I'd scare everybody away. Mm. So it's like, joke, 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 boom, joke, 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 boom. Can, <laughs> let me, let me, I know we're almost out of time, but. That is also, the planet Saturn is in Sagittarius. And another thing Sagittarius about is, since it's so much fun, is comedy. I'm glad you brought this up because this is really important. When we've known too, when Saturn is in Sag, the people you're going to get your, the best news and political information from are the comedians. And who, oh, they're giving us so much great information because they're talking from the real standpoint, not spinning it. So if you look at any of the comedy, they're 
for the next, we still have a year and a half with Saturn and Sag. So this is where we, you know, you can really get good news from the people who are mm -hmm. known as com comedians. Go Comedy Central. Yeah. I know. Oh yeah, they yeah. have great ones in Britain. I loved it when I was over there. <laughs> okay, well, we're wrapping up. Dorothy, wrapping thank you for up. coming. You'll be back when we're time to talk about Capricorn. Capricorn, yeah. And thank you. so, yeah. So pay attention, um, and we will be seeing you again soon for Trump, surviving the Trump presidency. And have a happy Thanksgiving to all. Oh, okay. happy Thanksgiving. Well, actually, the, the, the day after Thanksgiving, I think this comes out. Anyways, we're off. Bye. <laughs>